Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video and today I'm back with another Weapon Top 5. I mentioned in last week's video that this is something a fair few of you guys have been asking me to get around to finishing, so that's exactly what I'm trying to do over the course of the next few weeks. And since the PC version is going to be launching soon, paired with the fact that we've also had some new weapon additions since I first started doing these, this is actually rather convenient timing. If you missed last week's video, I went over my personal top 5 longswords, but this week we're turning our attention to my favourite hammers. So if you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Now, kicking things off at number 5, we have the Puke Puke Hammer, Buena Flora. This is a really good hammer to go after if you're just starting out, so for PC players, this could be something you can consider using when you first pick up the game. Much like the Rathian Longsword in the last video, this is relatively easy to craft and farm, and it's something you'll encounter early on in your hunting journey. It has a good base attack at 963, while not the highest, it is still good, plus a very generous amount of poison at 540. Again, poison is a really nice passive abnormal status effect that you can just benefit from without really thinking about it too much. Not being a fast attacking weapon, hammer might not always be the first choice for status builds, but it's definitely something you can get value out of in this instance. Additionally, it has two level 2 decoration slots, which is also incredibly handy. Sadly, only blue sharpness, but nonetheless, a solid pick early on. Then moving on from there to number 4, we have the Zoro Magdaros Hammer, the Ragefire Magda Flogger. Now again, keep in mind this is my personal top 5 favourite, since I imagine some of you might be thinking, are you crazy, why are you picking this hammer? This is the Zoro Magdaros Hammer, it has very high base raw at 1,144, high blast attack at 420, a level 2 slot and a bonus 20 defence, and being rarity 8, it only has one augment slot. However, working against it, you have the negative 20% affinity, which you'll want to deal with, but that's easy enough and you then have this big chunk of green sharpness, not blue. And it's for this reason that a lot of people tend to overlook it. You can get it to have blue with handicraft level 2 and above, but if you keep that green and pair it with the bludgeoner skill from the Diablo set bonus, then you can actually get great value out of this. Keep in mind that while the Diablo set bonus works better the more blunt your weapon is, typically it's best to use with green sharpness. So this is actually a great thing to pair it with. Sure, it might be a little unconventional, but when I first saw this weapon and how cool it looked, I decided I had to use it anyway, and despite some of its shortcomings, you can definitely get some really good value out of this weapon. Then, in number 3, we have Pandemonium's Root, the hammer from Valhazak. In truth, part of the reason, in fact, one of the main reasons I like this, is just because it looks so damn awesome. It's an axe, and when you pair it with the Big Bang combo for hammer, it looks pretty brutal. But on the numbers front, it has good base raw at 1040, a decent chunk of blue sharpness, but with handicraft 2 and above, you can get that to white. It has a good amount of dragon attack at 270, average elder seal, and a level 2 slot. Again, only one augment slot since it's rarity 8, but that's a pretty solid weapon, which also has one of the most striking designs in the game. Then, in a number 2, a newer addition to the game, a weapon that wasn't present when I first started this series, and that is Devil's Crush, the Devil Joe Hammer. Again, this one looks pretty badass, in fact quite a few of the hammers do to be fair, but this one especially so. It's got very high base attack at 1196, it has blue sharpness but you can get white with handicraft again, so pair that with protective polish and you can make it go a little bit further. You do have negative 30% affinity to contend with, but again that's relatively easy to deal with, and you then have 210 dragon attack, a little bit lower than the Valhazak offering, but this does have high elder seal instead. So again, handy for dealing with those elder battles. It also has two augment slots, being a rarity 7 weapon, so this is a powerhouse offering that also has some good element thrown on top. And then to round it all out, in a number 1 we have the Diablos Shatterer 2. Again, I'm sure a lot of you guys saw this one coming, but this is another exceptional offering and not too hard to craft in the grand scheme of things. It's got 1196 base attack again, a small slither of blue sharpness by default, but if you do get handicraft level 5, that's maxed out, you can actually get white sharpness. But if you didn't want to commit to handicraft level 5, you could just throw a couple of points in to boost that blue. You again have that negative 25% affinity to contend with, a level 2 slot, plus 15 defense, 2 augment slots, and a hidden ice element of 150, but since you don't want this for the ice, then the advantage to this being hidden is that you can pair this with the elementless jewel to further raise the base attack. So while this hammer might not be as visually striking as some of the other offerings, there's no denying its power. If you want to hit hard, then you cannot go wrong with this. But those, my friends, are my personal top 5 favourite hammers. I will throw in one more honourable mention, and that is the No Gigante's Hammer Obliteration's Footfall. In truth, it could have just as easily made it into the top 5, but then No Gigante weapons always do. It's relatively easy to make as you progress through the campaign. It has great base attack, high Elder Seal, decent dragon, so all round it's a solid pick. But it also looks like a brush that you use to clean the bottom of your shoes or the sink. But hey, if that's your thing, then this is also another solid pick. 
But that's it for this week. I will also be bringing back Mix Set Monday next week. I just put it on a short break for a bit while I worked on a few other things. But we'll have some sets next week in preparation for Behemoth. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.